Good afternoon. It's October. That means another month and another box from Toolhead's Crates. And so before I get started into that, you might have noticed if you're following along that there is no video for September. Well, I got a crate in September, big, and it was heavy. We we're very excited. We turned on the cameras and we filmed pulling three things out of the box. Good tools. Good quality combination wrenches, longer than the normal cheap ones you can get. Um, maybe we'll put some pictures up here. There's a full set of metric. There's a full set of standard and uh, a nice little uh, metal flashlight. All really good quality. It meets the general estimated value of about $200 for the box. We only paid $100 for it. Happy with them completely, already put them to work. But it made for a really sad video because when you're unboxing things and there's just not much to unbox. It just doesn't really lend itself to a nice video. But there, I did get a comment before, since we haven't put up that video, um, I, one of the viewers posted a comment about, they thought it might be more interesting if there was greater value single items versus as many items of, of a more common value like was in the August box. Well, September was your month because there was less items of greater value. So if you want to see what it was, you can, I mean, you can see the same here as you could see on their website where they posted the pictures of the, of the contents of the boxes. <laughs> All right, so let's get started. As advertised, they have changed their shipping they now use FedEx because all the boxes from the USPS were garbage and fell apart before anybody received their tools. And uh, I heard there was a lot of complaints about that. So we've, we're now getting a good box. Hopefully the tools are still better than the box. Still no specific inventory of what comes in the box, but this is a big box and you can see, you see what I can see, it's full of tools. So let's set it aside, start pulling things out and see what we've got in here. First up, it's an Evercraft circuit spark tester. It's a basic, uh, it has a little light. You connect one side, touch the other side. You can verify you're getting a signal across. Lights up a little. It's not an LED bulb inside. It's a, it's a basic version, but it would serve its purpose. Nothing spectacular, but a handy little piece to have around if you need to test a circuit or a spark plug. So we got that one. Set that aside. Next up. All right, this, similar to an insulated screwdriver we got uh, two months ago, but this is a full bit and driver set. It doesn't appear to be insulated. But it is a, it's a good handle. You can get a good grip on it. And it's, I like that it's a, it compacts down and it does have everything you need in it. And then it mounts inside its own little carrying case. So it's compact. Full set of uh, Torx bits, hex, and then flat and Phillips head. Yeah, that's handy. Can hang on a 
hang on the on the backboard on the board contact to fit in the bag because it latches in you don't lose the pieces won't fall out yep that's another nice little one obviously that's a it, a big thing used to be that they would have the screw on lids and then they'd put like four bits in the back of screwdrivers then you had a limited two Phillips two flat head and that was the extent of what you could change out in the bit the problem with that is every time you tried to screw anything down you would unscrew the lid and then everything would fall out so I prefer this over that it's a lot a lot more options and less cumbersome as far as unscrewing the back if you're trying to really put pressure onto anything. Okay. Simple, straightforward air gun blow kit. Everybody needs that. I have them. You like to have extras. You got to keep in every room next to every hose. I mean, it doesn't matter if you're in the wood shop or if you're in a in the outdoor shop where you're blowing out the, the grass off the lawnmower to get up under things, cleaning stuff up, blowing out a carburetor. Every shop needs plenty of these. Nothing, nothing fancy, nothing special, it's, but it's just a simple, straightforward blow gun with uh, all the attachments. Well, let's go over the attachments because sometimes people don't know what they're expecting from these. So, attachment here, this is a, it's just your standard blow gun, but it's a rubberized tip. And that comes in handy when you're trying to like blow stuff out of something and you don't need to just be gouging it up with a metal point. Um, I use this in the wood shop a lot. If I need to get in and blow out of a, the little chips out of a carving or something without gouging it with a tip, you just don't want hit metal against stuff. Uh, same thing in a carburetor or anything else, you don't want to like gouge it. So. It's kind of a, a nicety to have the, the soft tip on it to Im improve there. Then you just get some, a couple of basic screw in bits for various things, filling up a basketball, football, comes in handy. Now this one, this is if you have to fill up a tire. You can screw this on and after you've taken out your uh, the valve inside of a, a wheelbarrow, lawnmower tire, four-wheeler, whatever, and then you can mount it on there and fill it up and to seat the bead after you've had to change a tire out, replace something, or patch it and then reclose it. And you, you can't put enough air through a valve to make a tire inflate and, and seal the bead popping on it. So this allows you to seal it off and then put full pressure to, to seal it on and then once that's that's done it's all the, once it be sealed then you can remove it put the valve back in and then pressurize it normally so a lot of times people don't know what that's for that's for tires and then this attachment you'll find this is useful for doing mounted inside the one for the tires as well you it's uh it's got ridges it's designed to slide inside of a tube so you can use this to uh, inflate whatever is at the other end of a tube depending on what it is you're trying to you blowing out a tube clearing out some junk from something that's plugged up a fuel line various things like that so it's it's convenient for using that okay so nice to have a an actual little clip shut carrying case for these things because obviously usually you get stuff comes in just typical garbage wrappers and then those you throw them away and then all your stuff gets spread out across your workbench or piled somewhere and then you end up losing pieces so that's really nice to have the, the little solid closing case This is an Irontron 120 lumen LED multifunction headlamp. Super bright LED, never needs replaced. Telescoping beam, 
you can just, okay, it's a twist adjust from a spot to a flood, three output modes, it includes its batteries, 120 lumens, Crack it open, see what. Let's get closer. My usual opinion on headlamps is I like them to be a little bit um, closer to the forehead, not so extended out. I kind of think they, they just tend to generate more forward droop. So I don't know how well that will work. It feels like the, but at least it has the, the top strap. It's not just around your, not just around the head, but it comes across the top. So that'll help keep it in place whether you're wearing a hat you'd have to turn around backwards obviously or you wouldn't be able to see the ding it says it includes three AA batteries it doesn't come on so we will open it up it's not good quality it came with three rotten AA batteries. They're corroded, which uh, can no longer function. And then the battery corrosion causes damage to the... You see, it destroys the contact points. So this vaguely budget light is officially the first piece of garbage we've received. So I wasn't impressed with the design and the quality. So we've now discovered that not all of them are worth keeping. Let's see what's next. This is just a very basic, cheap Chinese brand um, set of picks. And if you've got the straight, then 45, the hook, and, uh, and a 90. If you're going to have just a cheap set of hooks, I guess these don't really matter if they're cheap. You're always going to end up bending and breaking tips of these. I've bought a number of sets over the years and I, I ruin them and then I get another set. This is just a cheap but still effective set of little picks. Nothing special but useful. Next we have a Bondo rubber mallet. Screw on rubber edges. Uh, not familiar with Bondo as a brand. But it's a basic weighted um, plasti plastic rubber mallet for. I use these a lot in the wood shop. Um, these, are, these are common and, and designed for uh, auto body work. For straightening out sheet metal but in the wood shop where I have to knock around pieces of wood to align them and it, obviously you can't use a metal hammer it tends to leave really bad marks so a nice wide slightly tapered I mean the, the same reason why this is good on cars is is why it's good in the wood shop for for edging things into place and doing various things like that these are really good I, I like to buy from time to time more Anytime, 
somebody invariably is going to grab it and then like hammer on a piece of metal or screw or something and ruin the end and gum it up. So then you just have to replace it. They're, they're not expensive, but they're, they're important and nice to have and always welcome another one. There's a lot in this box. All right. This is a Mayhew Select three-piece chisel and punch set. Made in the USA, three sixteenths round, a three eighths squared, and a five sixteenths. I mean, these are great to have. The my my only complaint would be that two months ago I got a full set, so these are just duplicates, and I would hope that toolheads would understand that if you sent me one. You don't need to send me another, but if they've got a whole lot of more people have signed on and they're doing a lot more tools, then that's fine. Um, at some point, I will always need replacing the ones that I've already got because, I mean, their whole job is to get beat with a hammer and I'm going to break them or dull them or round them off and then I'll need another one. So they will get use. It's It just seems a little bit redundant, but I'm not going to complain about good American-made steel chisel set. All right, this is a Titan step bit. Now, step bits, if you're not familiar with, it's a full set of drill bits in a single drill bit. The nice thing about this is it's actually graduated on the inside edge. You can see how big each section is. Hopefully you can see that on there. Yeah. But the whole point of this is not for drilling through a piece of wood. This is for cutting into sheet metal. And, and as you go in, you just step up the size that you're drilling until it's the size that you need to put your screw through. It makes it easier so you're not trying to drill a fat hole all at once but it also allows you to just quickly have one item in your drill and get to that point without rummaging through a, a case of drill bits to pull out the one that's just the right size or you find out that that one's been broken or lost. This guarantees you there. Now, I don't know the quality of these, so I'm not sure that it's gonna be a good or a bad one. We might have to check some reviews and see after somebody's put some use through it. Because I've bought two identical step bits in the past. The first one I bought at a Harbor Freight and it just soft metal and didn't chew its way through anything. And so it ended up being a wasted purchase. It didn't cost anything. We weren't sad about that, except for then we had to waste our time to go back to our local big box store and then buy one of a higher quality to finish the job. And then it went through everything really simple. So the quality of the steel that goes into step bits is a huge, huge deal. And so uh, the fact that they've taken the time to laser engrave the sizes in it makes me hopeful that they've put more care and uh, effort into it. And then at some point, maybe we'll uh, We'll get a chance to drill a hole through something and then uh, have an opinion as to how fast it wore itself out or did the job right. So maybe more to come with this. Now we have another Titan tool, seven and a half inch multi-purpose shears. Now, if you've watched the previous video, you saw me using shears for a lot of things. It's pretty much a razor knife for shears for almost opening everything that you need. 
So they're good to have. These are Japanese stainless steel. It's a 420J2 Japanese stainless steel. Precision ground and hardened, so maybe they will keep a good edge. Garbage shears are really pathetic. Uh, mechanism seems to be pretty good. They've got a, a Teflon aircraft nut to keep the right tension on it. Cuts quite simple. It is spring loaded. It has a lock. Comes with wire cutter. Destroying the blade on uh, on things like wires defeats the purpose of uh, of scissors because. They're not designed to cut like this, and then you end up with a sharp point being forced to cut through the strands of a wire. The good thing about having shears with the wire cutter built in down here is, instead of using a point to do it, it just cleaves it off, and it makes a cleaner cut, and it doesn't damage the shears. So it's a simple add-on that they do, but it makes this hugely more valuable. So I'm pleased with that. And the latch internal in the handle keeps them shut so nothing's dinging up the edges. It does have one serrated edge. If you're gonna try stripping off the edges of things and then one smooth edge. So these are pretty good. The handle plastic is, uh, it's, it's good. It's medium quality. It's not a low quality handle, but it's not, it's nothing special, but I do like it. The key for shears anyway is the, the important part is your, the blades and these look to be in pretty good shape. And I like the little add on of the wire cutter. Next up we have grinding wheel discs. So. Obviously, you'd need to have your own grinder, but these are very, I mean, I have a stack of these. They come in handy. You have to grind, especially if you're welding or doing work like that. I have uh, kids with a go-kart who ride them aggressively, and I break lots of things, and then we weld it up, and then we grind it smooth, and then sometimes we touch up the paint. These are uh, simple but necessary wear items you just wear them out throw them away you put another one on so a stack of five of these useful will always get more value out of that nice to have this is a right tool quarter inch 90 tooth ratchet So right tool, it's an 85047 little quarter inch ratchet. Very convenient. They, they, everybody needs a, a small set of these for various things to get into tight places. The levers, probably my favorite. Um, the value in a, in a ratchet, they either have a tiny little thing you have to grab and twist with your fingers when you're wearing gloves, it makes that difficult. But you can flip the forward and reverse rat lever on them to change direction for the rest quite easily. It's built really, really solid. It, for its size, it's heavy. Just so you get the point. Um, it has just a serious feel of quality. I like this. It's not just a stamped piece of metal. This, this entire thing is, is built really well. So probably the best quarter inch ratchet that I have. I like that.
All right. This is just a simple spring clamp set. Set of four. They're super handy for everything. Woodworking, we use them. Everything you use them. And welding, you got to use them. You just have to hold two things together until you can fasten it in some way. Or you're making a little paint booth, you just hang hang a tarp up over a piece of wood along the edge. You can build a wall. If you're going to make a video and I didn't want you looking at all the stuff on my shelf, I could have just hung anything. These little spring clamps, these are pretty solid. You can see the spring in there is, it's not dinky. It, the spring looks a little stronger than the rest of the clamp does. So that's, it'll hold on nicely. They rubber coated the tips on everything. So that's, they're just a nice little set, handy set of spring clamps. Just good little, there's, there's a lot of knick-knack-ish stuff in this box but you you need it workshops need all these little things they just the right tool for the job to make things come together and you just need a little pick to dig into stuff or a clamp to hold something in place or a little fitting piece for this or a little tool for that so these are not big expensive items in this box but it's mostly useful stuff Okay, this is just a performance tool brand uh, razor knife. Comes with a little, little extra set of replacement blades. They're all identical replacement blades, so it's not not a set of chains of blade for various types. They're all just the same, purpose built. It is a good, good lid to keep you from dulling your blade. It's got us. It's 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 built really solid. Okay, the clamping mechanism just pulls through the handle. To cinch it up tight. So you're not trying to like use a wrench right next to the blade to tighten it up. It just screws on the snugs up from the back. It's not magnetic. Don't know that I would need it to be. But just a nice little nice little razor knife for fine details. I use them a lot in the in the wood shop in some of the carvings that I make to get down into the finer grooves to kind of clean out some chips that didn't quite get pulled out. And the handle, it's a really good handle on it. I like that. Next up we have oh, just another little star bit set. So we've probably this is another example of we've received enough of the same tool. These, okay, these are the the tamper resistant bits for the star bit, much like we got with the August box had a nice a, a full set of of these with the with the angle on them. A lot easier to use. This, I guess, you could
it's kind of redundant. It's useful, but because I have, uh, I've received two sets of these now so far from Toolheads Crate, this will probably be a little bit less valuable to me. And because they're not in any sort of particular carrying case, it's just likely to run a little loose in the drawer and I might lose a few of those. But still useful, but we have to be careful with a, a subscription crate that they don't just start repeating all the tools that they send. All right, this is a standard 13 piece twist drill set. So these are interesting. These are left-handed drill bits. That's why it took me a minute to read the box. And, and so now I had to look at it because it's the kind of stuff that makes you go, no, drill bits are not left and right. These, these are a, they're a specialty drill bit. This is designed to go in the opposite direction. Let me get a larger one. You can see it a little bit better. Let me, uh, for comparison, I'm going to grab another drill bit so that you can, you can see the difference here. So if you look carefully, you'll notice that this one cuts in that direction. Normal drill bit cuts in that direction. So you take these drill bits, you put them in your drill, you put your drill on reverse, and then you go for, you tap a starter hole with this punch, and you drill your screw out backwards. And so as you dig into the screw that say you broke the head off of a screw inside of something, as you drill it out, you'll eventually reach the point where there's not enough metal in the screw with the threads to hold it in the hole versus the pressure from this drill bit, drilling it out, going backwards, and it will start to stop drilling the screw and start unscrewing the screw and it'll pull out the broken screw. It'll still drill a hole like a regular drill bit, but you have to remember to put your drill on reverse. But it's much more handy for unscrewing broken screws. So that's a, a more unique drill bit set. And I, I kind of like that just because I've, I've had to just drill out screws and then take picks to dig out the threads until I could get a grip on it with some needle nose and pull it out. But a reverse drill bit, while it doesn't come up all the time, it can be a very handy little piece. It is not a, a crazy high quality one, but for the amount of use that you will get out of them. I mean, they're not just a common everyday use of drill bits, but having it when you need it is the important part. This is just an energizer 
flashlight, but here's the part, there's no, there's no switches. When you hold on to it, you short it out and turn it on. When you let go, it goes off. So if you drop your light, it goes out. If you set your light down, it goes out. You don't drain the batteries because once you're done, you just set it down and it goes out. So it's kind of a, it's a gimmick, but it's a useful one. It serves its purpose. It's just a on off flashlight and you never have to worry about leaving it on by accident. It's entertaining, it's useful. It's, it's not oversized. Um, the, the old days of mag lights are gone. Nobody wants to carry around a club anymore. It is very lightweight. It's basically the weight of the batteries because it's just an LED bulb. 50 lumens, 20 hour life, and the life is only as long as you hang on to the light. So, interesting concept. Okay. A bag full of red and black alligator clamps. Let's see what the connection for this is. All right, these are just build your own um, jumper, just push in the wire, solder it down, clamp down the insulation, make your own length alligator clip kit. Handy for lots of little things. Another one of those fine examples of uh, something convenient when you need to just come up with a quick connection somewhere and instead of just like bare wire, wrap it around, reach it across, you can just make a little um, safe alligator clamp that's not going to short out. It's got the insulation on it. One of those things you put it in the drawer with the other useful things that you'll eventually need at some point and then you can grab it and make good use of it. box has a lot of little things. Oh. Another bag of a smaller size. So more alligator clips, lots of jumpers to be made and had. Useful. I don't know how many I'll use. But, but there's no shortage. These are, so we've got small, medium, and large. These are the big, big jaw ones. Spring loaded inside. You could use these to make actual, you could actually use this for jumper cables for a small ATV. We're definitely stocked up on the clamps. Right. We're still getting the sweet stickers. I'm going to have to put them up on stuff now. And last item in the box. These are power torque bolt extractors. This is a set a little more advanced than the, the drill bits. If you get a, a bolt rounded off, it has difficulty coming out. This is designed to 
solve that for you. You can see it's not a standard. Let me see what I got. regular 3H drive socket but you can see how it fits on the on the head of a bolt so it's it's designed to only turn it and dig in in the event that that bolts rounded off this is going to just bite and grab right on the shank to really get some torque to remove a rounded head bolt so there's plenty of slop going the other direction, so it's not for that. It's designed to remove it. So they've just gone to the trouble of making the purpose design on the extraction for gripping the edges, removing nuts and bolts. Strip, rusted, painted. You can fit them in there, and then it just grabs on and pulls them out. So... That's probably one of the handiest little sets. This is just the, uh, I guess, half of a set. It's kind of a, the mix of a couple of the main sizes that are common between like 7 16 and 11 millimeters. A 12 millimeter, 9 sixteenths, and 14. So it's handy. It's a, you, you don't necessarily need these for all sizes. Hopefully the, these would be the sizes you're looking for. Otherwise it doesn't help much because it does skip around a little bit. But it's, it's one of those things that if you did need it, this would be extremely useful. So, and it latches solid. So that's a good Good little kit. You definitely have a place for that. So now, this is where we're at in the October box. This is uh, very different from last month's, where it was, like I said, it was just three items in a large box. This is just a normal size box. A lot, lot more happy with the way this was shipped. I wasn't concerned that I lost half the tools because of the destroyed box. So I think it's a positive thing that Toolheads Crates has now transitioned over to the FedEx for their shipping. Uh, hopefully they don't spend a, too much more on that shipping where they have to start forwarding that price on to us. And, and decrease the value of what we get shipped. So now you can see everything that came in the crate this time around. It's a, it's a wide it's a wide selection of uh, mostly useful tools, a little redundancy, a little bit of trash. Um, this is the first disappointment that I've had with the tool heads crate, sending out a corroded, useless, wore out headlamp. But, you know, not everything is, is going to be perfect. Like I said, a little bit of redundancy. I would like them to start keep in mind of the those of us that get these on a monthly basis. We don't need to repeat, even if it's not exactly the same. I mean, these are two. We, we, we received the small square block previously. We received the angled ones 
in the same one with the round square block. So I had in one crate, I got two sets of these. Now I've got a third set, all from Toolheads crates. So save your uh, save your energy on, on these sort of redundant things, and keep giving us a variety. I don't mind stocking up on bits of uh, useful stuff sometimes. Let's not get carried away with that either though, because I will get use out of these. I will make jumpers out of these, but a lot of shops really just don't use this sort of stuff very much. So this is what I found. Uh, we'll, it'll be a tough, it's gonna be tough to measure the value in this. A lot of these things are somewhat generic and regardless of the the cost or the value that toolheads put into getting them it could be something that's as uh, common and simple as a few dollars at of a for a like item so you have to be concerned that we might be getting into the category of a grab bag of random harbor freight stuff but some of the stuff is it's, it's all useful. Some of it is really good quality, and then and some of it is just meh. But it's not trash, except for the one piece. So that is what we got for October in Toolbox Crates. Hope you enjoyed the video. Ask me some questions. Maybe I can explain more about any particular item if somebody didn't understand what I what the point I was making on anything and if I've had some people suggest that I give them tips or or other things that's great but it's hard for me to think of what tips you need so if you have a specific question or you think how would I do something then that will give me an understanding of what I could try to do to explain it and make it useful or helpful and then I can make other videos that aren't just unboxing of crates of tools, but I could provide helpful, useful tips for somebody that's learning with tools, with woodworking, or anything in general from a shop. So thanks for watching the video. We'll see you next month. Okay, now take your time and just... All right. Oh, how was I supposed to start this one? Huh? Well, I can't say welcome back to everybody because that doesn't really I guess not a whole lot. Just be like, hey, we're back. You might notice it wasn't in September. Uh, it's October. Good afternoon. Yeah. We're going to cut that part.